Hey, everybody, welcome to the Addiction Unlimited podcast, where you get to learn everything you want to know about addiction and recovery. I'm your host, Angela Pugh, co founder of Kansas City Recovery, life coach, and recovering alcoholic. To learn more about me, you can listen to episode zero on your podcast app or find us on the web at addictionunlimited.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Addiction Unlimited podcast. I'm your host, Angela Pugh. It feels like I haven't talked to you guys forever. I don't really know what that's about, but um, I've had a challenging couple of weeks in my work and my mood has definitely been on a low, but things are coming together and starting to feel better. And that's actually a great segue into our topic today. I never want you guys to feel like you're alone in this, and that's really why I talk about my own struggles and challenges, because it's just the nature of life to have struggles and challenges, and that never goes away, no matter how long you've been sober or how mentally healthy you are, but there are things that we can do to give us the opportunity to respond to challenges differently and to not hang on to them so tightly that you feel like it's the end of the world, you know? So today I'm going to talk about some of the biggest mistakes I see people make in early sobriety or recovery. I say in early recovery, but the truth is these stumbling blocks can pop up at any time in our lives and certainly at any stage of sobriety. So it's good to be aware and know how to work around them. And we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. But first, my big announcement. I've been telling you guys that I was working on a new website full of tools and resources to support recovery at any stage. And I am so freaking excited to tell you the website is ready. This is officially my first announcement, and I can't wait for you to go check it out and take advantage of all the good information there. There are courses and a couple of different products over there. A couple of things are free, of course, and all the options to work with me as your coach are available there as well. I want to give you a quick rundown of what you will find there, and I set all of this up to support you and give you ongoing guidance and tools to build your own toolbox full of tools to help you. And the website is www.myrecoverytoolbox.com www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. Many of you have the recovery recipe and have been using that, and the free version of that is always available on the website and will always be there for free. Also, you may have heard me talk in the past about listening to things when I fall asleep, right? I've never been a person who sleeps well or easily. It's literally been a struggle for me since I was a teenager. So over the years, I've played with different tools and things to help me sleep. And one of the things I've found success with is guided meditation or relaxation recordings. So I made one for you. It's an incredible, relaxing affirmations, subliminal messaging. It's great for sleep, great for boosting your sobriety, and it is so relaxing. And I'm super proud of it, honestly. And it's on the site, www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. And its introductory price is only $19.99. And I have a ton of these things that I've bought over the years and I use them forever. Literally like my favorite one is one I bought when I lived in Los Angeles probably 25 years ago. It came on a CD. That's how long ago it was. And I still use it to this day. I've bought a million different ones over the years and I also find similar things on YouTube all the time to listen to when I fall asleep. But this is a resource that never gets old and where I like to listen to something powerful and relaxing to help me with sleep, 
other people are using it just as a guided meditation. So you can figure out how it works best for you. It's so relaxing and peaceful and it isn't too long. I think it ends up around 30 or 35 minutes and I'm just so proud of it. I know you'll get so much relief using this. And for 20 bucks for something you can keep forever and use endlessly is a pretty smart investment. Also on there, I have a free five-day email series. You know I listen to motivational and inspirational videos every single day of my life, and it has absolutely changed my life and completely changed my mindset and outlook. And on YouTube, I have a folder where I collect videos as I find them. So as I'm searching around looking for new ones, if I find one I really like, I just save it to my folder. This five-day email series is called Mindset Makeover. You get an email every day for five days with a video from my personal collection. This is a great way to start your day. It's super simple. It raises your energy and belief in yourself and really makes you feel like you can conquer the world. I think you will love it, and it's totally free. Then I took the tool from recovery recipe, and I turned it into a full course narrated by me. I walk you through the recipe and give you all the tips and tricks to use the recipe. And I added a ton of bonuses and resource lists and the sober meditation is included in it and all kinds of good stuff. It's called the recovery starter kit. Honestly, the Recovery Starter Kit is the whole reason I built this new site. It was specifically to offer this course so you have hands-on step-by-step guide um, to build healthy recovery and to get you through your days with less anxiety and not feeling so overwhelmed. And the Recovery Starter Kit, too, is super inexpensive. It's less than a coaching session with me, (laughs) and I did that on purpose because I want you to have the support, and I want you to have the opportunity to invest in yourself and not break the bank, right? So I think those are the biggies, the sober relaxation, sleep meditation, whatever you want to call it, the recovery recipe, the mindset makeover series, um, series, and the recovery starter kit. And of course, all my coaching options are on that site as well, it's Again, www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. You can sign up for our Monday night group coaching on there. I even have a picture from one of our regular Monday night attendees. She snapped this amazing pic of her cat watching all of us on her computer screen during our group coaching. It's absolutely adorable. And thank you to April for sharing that. She posted it in our Facebook group and I immediately asked her if I could use the pic and she said yes. So you'll see the pic of him enhancing his recovery with group coaching. Um, One more time, it's www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. And the Recovery 2K program is on there. Individual coaching sessions are also on there. www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. Now on to our topic today. We're going to talk about some of the major mistakes I see people make in their early sobriety. And this is my observation over the course of the last decade plus working with addiction, being an addict myself, obviously, and being a life coach and studying behavior and how to change and how to change habits, right? Like that's all the stuff that I obsess over my whole life. So Many of the things you're going to hear me talk about today aren't necessarily specific to recovery or getting sober, but more about making big changes in your life or in yourself as a person. Most of the tools I talk about are centered around the art of change and breaking habits and understanding how all of that works. It just so happens that getting sober and quitting drinking is a huge change, right? And it requires action and intention and being purposeful about the moves you make so you can get the results you want. It's like GPS for your life. (laughs) You wouldn't get in your car to like go on a cross-country trip 
and not use a map or GPS, right? Because who knows what would happen or where you would end up. So it doesn't make sense to try to navigate a ginormous shift in your life without guidance and understanding of your destination. You hear me talk about this a lot, like know what your big picture goals are. Know your destination, know where you're headed. In that way, your daily, tiny micro decisions can support you in going that direction. Here's what I mean. I know I want to be sober. I want to feel happy and be proud of who I am as a person. I want to manage stress and anxiety better because sometimes they really kick my ass. I want my business to be successful. I want to travel. I want to do more public speaking. And I want to expand my entrepreneur portfolio with other ventures. That's my big picture. So like the last two weeks for me, when I was feeling completely overwhelmed and sad and like nothing was going my way, all I wanted to do was isolate and lay on the couch and feel sorry for myself which I did, by the way, (laughs) I did all of that, but just a little bit. Um, But then I remind myself that those choices are not moving me toward my big picture. If I'm hiding and letting the committee dictate my day with negative chatter and messages, then how am I going to serve you? How will I be able to show up for my clients if I'm at a party of one at my own private pity party? It doesn't get me closer to where I'm going. If I'm isolating, I'm not connecting. And when I'm not connecting, my sadness feels worse. So I have to make a different decision whether I like it or not. So let's dig into these handful of mistakes I see over and over again when people are trying to get sober and stay sober. Um, Number one, lack of commitment. You say you aren't drinking anymore, but only commit until it gets too uncomfortable or it feels too hard. And let me say this. I don't think you intentionally lack commitment. I think you aren't well prepared for what is coming or how it's going to feel. So you don't have strategies in place to get you through those hard times, right? The more tools you can have before a crisis moment strikes you, the better prepared you will be to get through those moments. I want you to understand from the beginning that there are going to be times that are super uncomfortable. You aren't going to feel good. Your anxiety will be super high and you will probably be quite irritated with the whole thing. I also want you to know that it will pass. I promise Just like your great moments pass, your bad ones will pass too. The best thing you can do for yourself is to be 150% committed from day one. Don't let the committee tell you that it's okay to have a drink, or you can start over again later, or maybe your problem isn't that bad, or any of the other million lies it tells you. And this is part of it too. No that your brain, the committee in there, is lying to you. It can't help it. It's been poisoned by alcohol, so it's not in its right mind. And it doesn't have your best interests at heart right now because it wants to be fed more poison because that poison is addictive. (laughs) Do not fall for it. Almost everything your brain tells you is a lie for a while. Your brain has been hijacked and its goal is very different from your goal. Do not forget that. It's going to tell you, you don't need help. You can do this on your own. It will tell you to isolate. It will keep you from picking up the phone and connecting with people. Or it will tell you, you don't need help from a coach or group coaching. It will tell you, you aren't as bad as those people. (laughs) It will tell you to feel bad about being in this situation, and it will tell you to keep it a secret. All of these things are huge lies it has to tell you to keep you isolated and alone and vulnerable. I want you to shift your commitment to yourself, 
Don't be committed to listening to the committee, but be committed to doing the things you know are the right things to do. Tell the committee to sit down and shut up that you are taking over now. And think of like, this is no different than when I eat ice cream instead of eating broccoli, right? That's kind of an extreme thing because if I'm in the mood for ice cream, I'm definitely not going to be in the mood for broccoli. But you get where I'm going with this. The committee wants the ice cream because it wants me to feel bad about my decisions. And I know logically that broccoli is the right choice to be the person I want to be and accomplish what I want to accomplish. I know the ice cream isn't the quote unquote right choice. And this is where my level of commitment comes in. Because if I'm really committed to a goal of making healthier choices, then I'm not going to give in to the ice cream craving. I'm going to give the committee the big middle finger and I'm going to do what's right for me even when it's hard, even when I'm tired, even when I'm sad, and even when I just don't freaking want to. I'm going to make the right choice. That's commitment. The next thing I think is challenging for most people is something you hear me talk about in the recovery recipe, feeding your sobriety. You have to feed your sobriety every day if you want it to be strong. For me, this means I consume information that is specific to recovery somehow. It may be watching a movie about addiction and recovery. It may be reading an article online. It may be listening to an audiobook by someone in recovery. It may be as simple as reaching out and connect, connecting with another alcoholic by text or a phone call or going to a meeting. Maybe you go to an online meeting or do our group coaching. It can be a thousand things, but it has to be specific to my sobriety and allowing me to learn more about it and how to nurture it. This doesn't have to be time consuming. It just has to be intentional. Go out of your way to find something to feed your sobriety. And this leads me perfectly to the next one underestimating the strength of alcoholism. I don't care if you are one of those people that doesn't like the labels. You don't want to be called powerless. You don't want to be called an alcoholic or whatever. This is more of your brain lying to you, by the way. All of that stuff is just a smoke screen the committee is throwing up to keep you off balance. Because the truth is, the words don't matter. I don't care what you want to call yourself or what cutesy new terminology you want to use. If you know you can't drink, then the key is to not drink. (laughs) Who cares about the words and the names and the labels? It's not even worth spending time arguing about it. Just don't drink because you know you don't drink well. And do not for a moment underestimate the power of this monster. If it was easy, you wouldn't be listening to podcasts and going to meetings and looking for help and support. If it was easy to do it on your own with no guidance, don't you think we would all do it that way? If it was just that simple, then there wouldn't be 14,000 treatment centers in the United States and people wouldn't be dying left and right from drinking and health issues as a result of drinking. And don't forget, as drunks, we kill other people too. That's a really unfortunate little side effect. This thing is a monster. And it is more powerful than you can ever imagine. And it will serve you well to not underestimate its strength. If you want to toy with thoughts of someday being able to drink socially then it will be happy to prove you wrong and embarrass you and continue to break you. Every chance you give it, it will bring you to your knees. It's just super powerful and you cannot underestimate that. And you know this. You know that feeling of waking up after drinking again when you told yourself you weren't doing it anymore. You know the feeling of another day one And the feeling like crap and being so mad at yourself and disappointed and feeling completely alone. Remember, alcoholism needs a certain set of circumstances to thrive. It needs you to feel bad about yourself. It needs you 
isolated and it needs you to feel alone and lost. It needs you to doubt yourself and to be angry at your life and at yourself and at other people. It needs you to be hiding so it can prey on you. If you want to start winning the battle, you have to go against all of those things. And this is another thing on the list of mistakes, keeping it a secret. Feeling embarrassed or ashamed and not telling anyone that you're making this huge change. I'm not saying you need to go out and shout it from the rooftops or go into your HR department and make an announcement that you're an alcoholic and getting sober. I'm saying you need someone to connect with that you are honest with about who and what you are. You also don't have to tell people that you aren't drinking anymore because you're an alcoholic. You can just say you decided to make some healthy changes in your life and alcohol wasn't making you feel great, so you're giving it up. Or say you're just giving it up for a little while, like whatever it takes for you. It doesn't have to be a big, dramatic, shame-filled ordeal. But it is imperative you have a person or a small group of people who know exactly what you are doing and why. And it's the underlying feelings that make this so important. Remember, addiction needs you to feel bad about yourself and to be hiding and isolated. And usually, people don't want to talk about their sobriety because they're embarrassed and they feel shame about it. They feel shame about not being able to control it. They feel shameful of being alcoholic. That is definitely poking the bear. You don't have to tell everyone, but you need to have someone who sees you, someone who can support you, and someone you can be honest with so you're not poking the bear. And this brings me to the last thing I'm putting on this list perspective. This big change you're making in your life is not going to feel good if your perspective is negative. If you're only focused on how bad you feel and how much you miss your old habits, how lonely you are, how bad your anxiety is, all of this negativity does not serve you and will not get you closer to comfortable and feeling better. You want to hide your problem. You don't like AA. You don't have time. You don't have anything to do or anyone to hang out with. You can't imagine never having a drink again. Negative, negative, negative. You will drive yourself crazy if this is what you focus on. Shift that perspective to all the good things that will come from changing your life. Think about how good you're going to feel waking up with no hangover. Think about how much money you will save and how much more stuff you can accomplish with a clear mind. Think about how much more dependable you will be as a parent and how much comfort your kids will get by seeing you clear and stable and knowing they can count on you. Think about how much better your body will feel and how much better you'll perform at work. You'll have less anxiety. You'll definitely look better because you start to get your normal color back and your eyes get bright again when you stop drinking. Think about how strong you are because you are committing to this huge change. Think about how much your friends and family will admire you for turning your life around and having this incredible accomplishment. Put your time and energy into looking at your future and who you want to be. Don't go through your life staring in the rearview mirror because you'll crash. (laughs) And recognize that most of the greatest challenges in sobriety are totally in your control. Don't let yourself get bored because boredom will take you down faster than anything. Get creative. Plan things to spend your time and energy on in advance so you don't panic when that moment of boredom strikes. Be committed to your decision and be willing to get guidance and make adjustments to accommodate your new life. When people give you suggestions, you know in AA we say change your people, places, and things. 
And as addicted people, we're typically rebellious by nature. You guys hear me talk about this all the time. We're super rebellious. As soon as somebody tells me I should do something, I immediately don't want to do it, right? And that's the kind of thought process that I have to start recognizing and I have to call myself out on my own BS. I can't feed into that. If somebody has been sober for 20 years and they tell me it might be a good idea to consider this thing or that thing, I need to shut up and listen because they've been sober 20 years. They probably know the path better than I do. That doesn't mean I have to do it exactly the way they say and follow their path to a T, but it means if somebody says, hey, you know what? You might not want to hang out with your drinking friends a lot in the beginning of your sobriety because it might be uncomfortable. Then I might want to look at not hanging out with my drinking friends for a little while. It doesn't mean I cut them off and break up with them and tell them I don't want to be friends with them anymore. It means I need to take a step back and I need to be making healthy choices for myself to support my decision, right? Be open, open open-minded to taking some suggestions. Even if you have to twist it up a little bit and do it your own way, It's so important that you're just open to taking suggestions from other people, especially people who have already accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. You can't fix yourself with the same broken thinking that broke you. You know what I mean? Like, I can't sit in early sobriety when I drank for a million years. I was completely broken and decrepit. And I had no self-esteem. I had no idea how to live. I certainly had no idea how to live happy, right? I can't sit with all of that drama and think that I can fix myself. It doesn't make any sense. You have to have a guide. You have to have people show you the way and offer solutions and tell you how they did it and what worked for them. And I don't care where you get those people, It's just important to have those people. If you don't connect with people and be honest about what's going on, you will lose. If you isolate yourself and you stay alone and you spend too much time with the committee, you will lose the battle. And I don't want you to lose the battle. I want you to win the battle. And all of this stuff is within your control. There are so many resources. There are so many things that you can do to support yourself and to learn about all of these personality traits and things that we want to change in ourselves when we get sober. There are so many resources to figure out how to cope with anxiety and just to feel better. And the recovery recipe literally is a daily guide. You guys, it's free. It's totally freaking free. And get over to the new site and check out all those resources there that can help you just get through every single day. And www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. Literally, there are solutions for everything you're facing. And it's so much easier when we face it together. If we are connected and helping one another and supporting one another, alcoholism can't survive. It cannot survive under those circumstances. So that's the lesson for the day, the biggest mistakes. And I kind of crammed a lot of things in those categories, but I know it's stuff that we've talked about before and you guys hear me talk about in other podcasts. You know, all those things are our mainstays in this process of getting sober. And I just want you to really be committed to your new choice so you can feel good about it and make really good decisions to support who you want to become. That's what I want you to do. And there really are solutions for everything. So I'm going to put links in the show notes to the new site, all the coaching options, and to the Facebook group if you're looking for a totally private way to be connected to people and continue to support your sober self, the Facebook group is a great way to do that. Like I said, it's totally private. It's such good support. You guys in the Facebook group are amazing at supporting one another and um, sharing your issues and struggles and sharing your solutions as well. It's really like the Facebook group has so far exceeded all my expectations. I love it there. And I would love to see you in the Facebook group if you haven't joined yet. Facebook 
facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash addiction unlimited. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you love the new site. I can't wait to get your feedback and have a great day. And I will see you next week. You've reached the end of another great episode of the Addiction Unlimited podcast. Candid and honest conversation about addiction and recovery. Be sure to visit us at addictionunlimited.com to join the conversation and access show notes and links to everything we talked about. Love this episode? Please take 30 seconds to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes to help us improve and give you the information you want. Thanks for listening. See you next week.